Okay, today we're going to discuss the statement, the insert statement conflicted with foreign key constraint, uh, that error message. And we're going to be discussing kind of referential integrity and uh, foreign key relationships. Now, one of the, the quick things I want to note about um, foreign key relationships or um, let's say uh, SQL databases is that um, most of them are built this way. So we're, it's all about foreign keys and primary keys and referential integrity. 90% uh, of what you do with a SQL database is going to be related to this. So this is going to be something that you'll face a lot and there's nothing wrong with that. This is where NoSQL is different um, than SQL databases. So I'm going to build a few tables uh, really quickly and then we're going to go over these tables, uh, kind of what these tables are doing and, and whatnot. Now keep in mind all of this is supposed to be very simple. These are over, over simplified examples. I am not in any way, shape or form um, trying to create something really complicated here just to illustrate this point. So I'm going to build two tables. One is going to be a patient table and the other is going to be a gene table. And um, one second, but don't think for, for one second either that this is actual genetics and actual patients and stuff. This is just completely fabricated. So, but it's a good example of where you could apply this. Um, where I've seen foreign keys and whatnot applied is usually with like financial data, chemical data. I pretty much think any time you have a, a SQL database, it's going to be one of the, the applications, energy data also as well. Okay. Okay, so we have two tables. And up to this point, I don't think we've built a table that has a uh, primary key. The primary key is just kind of a, an identifier. Um, there's all kinds of definitions. You can Google a definition for a primary key, but the way I think of it is just an identifier. So I'm not going to go into a lot of that. You can research it if you want. It's not super complicated. Um, though there are people out there, by the way, that will try to, to make it out to be. So. All right. And, uh, cool. And then I'm going to insert into patient a couple of values. And you'll also notice that, uh, especially with the um, patient table, the there is no primary key on the patient ID. And there's a good reason for that, and I'll explain it in a second. So that's the data that we're going to use for this example. And like I said, it is very simple. I'm not going to use a lot of data here uh, just to demonstrate this point. So let's see what's going on. First of all, we have a table called genes. Genes has a two columns. Gene ID, which is an int and is a primary key, and then we have gene, which is a var car of 100. We have a table called patient, it has a patient ID, which is an int, patient, which is a var car of 100, and gene ID, which is an int. Okay, so a primary key, this is kind of like an identifier, that's really how it's used right there. Okay, and then we've added a constraint, we've added a foreign key. So let's go over the, the syntax here. Because so far we've created a bunch of tables, so by now, most of the viewers of these videos should be familiar with kind of the syntax of creating tables. But let's go over this constraint here. We're altering the table. We're altering table patient. So we're altering this table right here. I'm going to pause just a second so the video highlights it because I know there's a delay. So we're altering the patient table and we're adding a constraint and this is the name of our constraint. Foreign key gene ID or FK underscore gene ID. Okay. What type of constraint are we adding? We're adding a foreign key. We're adding it to column gene ID. So we're adding the constraint to this column. Okay, pay attention to the syntax, like alt a table, add constraint, foreign key, and then it's referencing genes, it's referencing this table genes, and this is the column of that table. I'm sorry, not that one, this one right here. So, and I'll demonstrate what a foreign key is in a second, but essentially, a foreign key says that this value in this table must exist in this table. And that's why we're going to show you this error message 
uh, because it's a really good way to learn foreign keys. Sometimes the, the best way to learn something is to find all the error messages to see what you can't do and then you know what you can't do. So we're going to kind of work backwards here. So basically, we cannot have a gene ID in this table that does not exist in this table. That cannot happen. Okay, so we've inserted into genes uh, these two genes, and before anyone thinks that these are kind of arbitrary here, I'll show you where I'm getting uh, these from. When you have DNA, DNA is made up of um, cytosine, thymine, guanine, guanine, and adenine. That Those may be misspelled. RNA is made up of um, cytosine, guanine, uracil, and adenine. And again, I may be saying these words wrong. But anyway, that's um, RNA and DNA. So these are your RNAs. So you have C, T, G, A. Actually, I didn't. I didn't. C, T, G, A. Yeah. And then this is um, C, G, U, A. So that's where I'm getting this from. These are not actual genes. But when you look at like a... I was looking at uh, the SRY gene sequence the other day, or one of them, and uh, it was like 158 characters, and of course they were using caps, but the idea was like, you know, C -C -G 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 -A -A -G 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 -G, the, the sequencing. So anyway, it's really fascinating stuff. So we're going to, we've inserted, let me just check really fast, but I believe we've inserted those values. Um, from patient, we're gonna select from patient. So we have John Doe, patient ID, and we can see that he has those two genes. So let's suppose, and you can see why, you'll see in a second, why we would want referential integrity here. Let's suppose we had someone try to say, hey, John Doe, we found out that John Doe has gene three. Now you may be asking, what's, what's gene three? Exactly, it's not in our gene table, right? So we're going to try to actually insert gene 3 into the patient table for John Doe. We know he has gene 1 and we know he has gene 2. Now let's try to give him gene 3. And all of a sudden it says the insert statement conflicted with foreign key constraint FK gene ID. The conflict occurred in the database client marketing table DBO genes column gene ID. The statement has been terminated. In fact, if we look, there wasn't added. That's what that error message means is that it was terminated and it conflict with the foreign constraint gene ID, right? So going back to this foreign constraint and looking at these tables, so we tried to add a gene ID in this table that did not exist in this table. There is no gene ID 3, right? And that's, that's very useful, um, I mean, really useful if you were a company and you're to manage important data where you don't want data existing in a, one table that doesn't exist in another. And why you have these constraints as a case in point is, first of all, think about the storage cost because Varkar is much more expensive than Int. If you tried to store the actual gene in this table, I mean, because John Doe may be listed tons of times, and by the way, actually, in, in the way you would organize this table. Um, this, this database, this is not a good data model because you'd actually have patient ID and then there would be another table where you'd have um, patient ID and patient in the other table. So it would be, this would kind of be your associative table and then your other table would reference that. Um, so this would be a good table for joins, but that's why I wanted to use a simple example is I don't want to build 400 tables. But the idea is that you you don't have to put, you can save a ton of storage costs this way but if it doesn't exist in another table, you don't want people to come in and insert data that's not in that other table. We can't insert a fourth and fifth and sixth and seventh and eighth gene. If we try to do that, it's going to give us an error. Those genes must first exist in the genes table, and then we can add them to John Doe and for anyone else that we need. So that's one of the ways in which you can use a foreign key constraint. Foreign key constraints are incredibly good. Um, especially to minimize errors. In other words, if you don't want data to exist in one table um, that doesn't exist in another table, that's a good way to enforce that so that if you have some, some careless mistake, some process that comes in and puts in data, it's going to prevent it from happening. You would rather something break than your data to be corrupt.